Adam alayhi salam had a son named Sheath or Seth. And Sheath was a gift. And even the name Sheath means gift. Sheath was a gift that was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Adam after the death of his son Habil. Habil was a righteous son, a righteous servant of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Adam, as a righteous man, he was attached to Habil. And when he lost Habil, he was very upset. So Allah Azza wa Jal replaced Habil with Shaith. Not only a righteous man, but a prophet and a messenger of Allah. And Adam named him Shaith as a gift. And it's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This son of Adam was very close to him. He obeyed his instructions. He learned from his father. He actually used to remind his brethren, his brothers and the nephews and so on, and the grand nephews. Whilst Adam alayhi salatu was salam was alive as well, he continued to remind and to remind people of the beginning because there was nothing, nothing else to remind them about at that particular time. Besides, to worship Allah alone and how Shaytan had made a promise and so on. And Shaykh, after the death of his father Adam, he ruled the children of Adam and he ruled with justice. He ruled in accordance to Allah's law and he brought unity between the people around him. But Shaytan could not stop his plotting. On the other hand, Qabil. And the descendants of Qabil grew and grew more than the people around Shaith. One of the sons known as Qabil or Cain, he had aggressiveness in his behavior. He had greed, he had arrogance. He was a tough character, difficult to get along with. So what he did, he decided to depart, to leave the rest and to go away on his own somewhere very far away. So Adam alayhi salam prior to his death, he used to live with Sheath alayhi salam and with all these other children of his in the mountainous regions, in the mountains. And now this young man decided or Qabil decided to go to the valleys and to go to the flat land somewhere further away. Later on, Sheath alayhi salatu was salam was given an instruction by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of his sharia was that it was prohibited to mix with the people who were gone on to the other side. Now there was a distinct, distinct sign. You could see very clearly the men from Qabil's side were not very good looking. We heard about that. And the women were very good looking. When it comes to where Sheath alayhi salam and the rest of them were, the men were very good looking and the women were not that good looking. According to narrations, I'm not speaking obviously from my own pocket here. It says that Iblis, he made himself to a form of a young boy, like an apprentice. And he went to a blacksmith who used to work with metal. And he asked if he could be an apprentice for that blacksmith. And what he did was, he worked for him and he designed a flute. And with that flute, he came out and he introduced it to everyone. He slowly started making sounds, sound that people had never heard before. Because there were, there were no sounds that people had heard. That was the beginning of time. And now he took, he created a little drum and he beat it. And everybody would come, what's that sound? And they would come around him and watch. Then he got a bit of metal and he started hitting it. And then it created a sound and they came. And then he made a bugle and he started blowing into it. And it created a sound and they came and they were excited. Wow, these people are intelligent. They, are, they have advanced much more than us. And they got so engrossed in it that they slowly started forgetting the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the other hand, Sheikh alayhi salam kept on reminding his people and he kept on telling his people what was right and what was wrong and so on. And on this hand, we find that shaitan is teaching them how to do evil, how to create evil. And so the flute was made and it sounded nice. It says that when he brought the flute to them, they started to move their bodies to the flute. When you hear musical instruments, the more you hear, the more every part of your body reacts to it. So they began to dance. This is how they introduced the musical instruments into existence. And through that, 
he would control them. They literally set aside a day, an evening, a Saturday evening. And amazingly, to this day, it lasts. To this day, it lasts. They set aside that evening where he would create these sounds. Everybody would come around and everybody would listen to him. And everybody would literally party. Party, they would party. Until there came a time when some of the youth from Sheath alayhi salatu was salam were visited by shaitan. And what did he do to them? Something interesting. He went to them and he created a doubt in their minds. He made them ask a question. He made them question the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is it that we are not allowed to mix with these cousins of ours, with these relatives of ours? What is the law all about? What is the reasoning? What is so bad about them? It says that the people of the mountain began to hear this flute. Some men were passing by close and they heard the flute. They liked the sound and they went in a direction because he said they didn't know where they were. They heard the flute one day and it attracted them and they went towards that direction. And these men, they saw the women of the land. Some of them decided, let's just have a peep at what's happening. So they came down from the mountains and they went. And from a distance they were watching and they had seen and it pulled them. Imagine they, they did not intend to engage in evil. But when they saw everybody's partying and what did they see? They saw very good looking females. And so they went closer. And when they went closer, they were seen. Subhanallah. They were seen and they were good looking men. So the women began to engage in what is known as tabarruj. Tabarruj meaning to start displaying their beauty and to start dressing up in order to attract. This was the first time shaitan taught them this. And the men and the women began to intermingle and through the music and the getting together in such a fashion, it resulted in the natural and biological interactions, reactions inside the man and the woman. And the shaitan played his role. And so free mixing began to occur without boundaries. Our scholars say that this is when zina began. This is when adultery and fornication began. Slowly but surely, with the introduction of this first flute and music, which called for a celebration between men and women gathering and dancing. And over time, zina was carried out. These young men, they came in and they enjoyed themselves. They had music, they had women, they had so much. They were partying, they were enjoying and they went away. So as the men came back, they told the other youngsters, Hey, you don't know what you're missing out on. You see there, they've got different sounds and these sounds are amazing. These people came back with a bigger group and they came back with a larger group. And the group was growing and every time that party happened, there were people from this side who used to quietly go to that side and they used to engage in sin. Now, the first sin on a collective level, like lots of people do it, was zina. Zina, adultery and fornication. The other sins were done on an individual level. And look what happened. So imagine now when a sin is done on a collective level. Keep in mind, people did not commit shirk as yet. Shirk is when people do certain acts of worship, making partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those different acts of worship. But bit by bit, bit by bit, the shaitan, the iblis, was taking the human beings to the second level, to the third level, to the fourth level. Bit by bit. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان. Do not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. The footsteps of the shaitan. The shaitan is very smart. He understands the human mind. So Iblis thought, I can't do shirk at the moment. It's too early. It's too, they're, they're too fresh at the moment. They know my tricks. So I'm going to bring about to them things that would move them. So he brought the music and he brought the zina afterwards. Iblis took them to that step. At this point, Sheath was commanding and prohibiting, advising. Sheath lived on for a few more decades. 
And some of the uh, narrations and scholars agree that from his progeny, from his children came most of the prophets. Most of the prophets ended up with him. And some say all of the prophets ended up in his lineage. No one came for after that from Qabib. No prophets, no messengers, but from Sheath, who was from the son of Adam alayhi salam and Hawa. Next, after Sheath, he was entrusted in charge and then at his deathbed after him, he entrusted it to his most noble son. Sheath alayhi salam entrusted it to his most noble son of many children. His name was Inos. His name was Inos, who carried out his mission after him. Then after him, his son Kenan, and then his son Muhallalal took the charge of the mission. Muhallalal is the one whom Persians, they claim to be the king of the seven regions. It says that he was the first to cut trees, build cities and big castles. It says that he built the city of Babylon in Iraq today, Babylonia, and the farthest city of, Su of Sus or Sas. He defeated Iblis, they say, and his army and then scattered them into mountains and valleys and killed a huge number of them as though there was a war between him and the jinns. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best about this. And his rule lasted for about 40 years after his last father. After him came a son named as Jared, who took charge of his mission. And here the Quran, the next man or the son that came after him, the Quran mentions him. His name is Idris alayhi salam.